So today it's laundry day here at the Bigfoot. There she is on laundry day. <laughs> it's How, glamorous. How's what the a, laundry going? It's a glamorous life we lead. And look at that fancy laundry machine. <laughs> Holy smokes is that thing nice. Looks like it's doing a fill cycle right now. That's right. Get ready to rinse. Get ready to rinse? Yep. Does it give you a time estimate? <laughs> however long my arm cranks. <laughs> oh yeah, you're not even seeing the best part. Okay, well here's the motor end of the washing machine. Go ahead and fire up the motor. Here you go. When we left you in our last episode, we were preparing for our visit to Yosemite National Park in April of 2023. The winter that preceded our visit was one of the snowiest on record, with snow in some higher elevations of the park reaching depths of 15 feet. This unprecedented snowfall closed the entire park, including our first campground, which is usually open year-round. In the days leading up to our visit, we have been obsessively checking the park website for reopening dates, and while doing so, learned that we will still be required to carry snow chains for the truck tires, even if we never have to use them. Our first thought, as usual, is to the internet! But we couldn't get them shipped to us in time, so it's taken some serious scrambling to find some locally that will fit. And then finally, in a stroke of good luck that is unusual for us, we get an email stating that the campground will reopen on our arrival date. We are so relieved. We are happy to get the green light to head in for our much anticipated visit, tire chains and all. I don't know. I don't know how we're gonna do this in the snow. Well, hopefully we never have to. Heather's up at the bathrooms, so I'm going to swing up there and pick her up, and then off to the dump station. Alright, off to the dump station. Let's go! We are still on our way to Yosemite and our friend Bill that we met a couple weeks ago said that um, California 49 takes you through a bunch of old gold mining areas and gold mining towns and that's the road that we're on. It is pretty twisty turny. What do you think about it? You're driving. It's not bad. But we just pulled off to the side because there is an amazing view. I'm going to turn you around and let you see it. Check that out. You can even see the road off in the distance that we're going to drive up. We just entered Yosemite. I'm wondering if there's going to be a sign. Oh, here's the sign. There's folks there getting their picture. Well, we're in site 104 here in Hodgton Meadow, and it took us quite a long time to get backed in. There wasn't a lot of room to maneuver the truck, uh, but we stuffed it in there and got as level as we could. It took quite a long time to level up. We were, I think, eight inches off side to side. So anyhow, we're up this morning. Uh, it's the following day, and we're going to head out and uh, check out some of the sites here in the park. For most folks, when they envision Yosemite National Park, it is the vast vista from Tunnel View, the massive face of El Capitan, or towering Yosemite Falls. We promise we will get to all that. I mean, we couldn't come to Yosemite and bypass all the main attractions. But this park is so much more than just one valley. We want to see more, so let's start in the other areas and then work our way into Yosemite Valley. We are in Yosemite on our way to one of the sequoia groves. We're hoping to hike down into it and we'll see if, um, if we're able. I don't know, the, it looks pretty snowy, pretty icy. We'll just have to wait and see when we get there. It's a beautiful drive though. 
All right, you seated up? I think so. I hope that this is enough. I hope we don't need the snowshoes. If we do, we're gonna have to come back and get them. Yeah, all right, so we are off to see some big sequoias. All right, we found the trailhead. You can see the sign's a little low. So, so far the trail's not too bad. It's kind of packed snow. If it stays like this, we'll be fine with the act tracks. If it gets to where it's not packed down, then we're gonna be in trouble. Yep, then we may have to turn around and get snowshoes, but we'll see how it goes. Wow, look at that tree. It is massive. Yeah, this is our first look at one of the giant sequoias. One of the mature ones. We've seen young ones, but this is one of the... That one is huge. You probably can't get any scale. It's big. I can't even express how huge this tree is. I know in the video, it probably just looks like a normal tree, but it is so big. Jeff's over there trying to get a picture of the tree. You just can't capture the, the how big it is, how enormous. Try as we might in video and film, I don't think it's gonna work. So here's the bridge you're supposed to cross. Looks a bit sketchy to me. Be careful. Little bit of snow on the bridge. It's all undercut on both sides. Made it. It's pretty amazing. We couldn't ask for better weather. Yeah, it's really nice weather. Temperatures are perfect. It's probably in the 50s. The skies are clear. It's gorgeous. Yeah, loop this way is what it says. Well, crap, where do we go from here, though? We have no idea where to go. Giant sequoias grow only on the western slopes of the Sierra Nevada mountains in California and only between 4,000 and 8,000 feet of elevation. With the environment being just right, there are three groves right here in Yosemite. This one, Tuolumne Grove, is relatively small, containing about two dozen of the mature giants. They're sinking in a lot. And it's hard to video when you're watching where you're stepping. Okay, looks like next thing up is Tunnel Tree. We are at Tunnel Tree, and you can see the tunnel down below that someone's cut into it. And then if you look up, there is not much tree left. I don't imagine that thing's gonna hold on for much longer, but who knows? Who knows how long it's looked like that? Wow, it looks big as you get close, doesn't it? In the middle of the tree. Man, it's a big tree. We are finishing up our hike uh, to the Tulumne Grove, or however you say it, and getting back to the truck. You can see all the snow that they've plowed up in this parking lot. It's a lot of snow. We 
we are at the Hetch Hetchy Reservoir standing on top of the O'Shaughnessy Dam and we are getting ready to do a five mile-ish hike um, and we're going to see several waterfalls along the way. It should be pretty. That is a big puddle. Gotta pull the pant leg up for this one. I think I'm gonna stop filming because I'm gonna need my hands. Good job. And now we're gonna be on the other side of the reservoir. How cool. Pretty neat. I have to be honest, when we started talking about doing this, I was like, how cool would a reservoir actually be? We've seen lots of them. This is pretty awesome. It's really pretty. It's kind of a blessing and a curse all at the same time because it's it's pretty to look at, but I also know that it... This isn't the way it's supposed to be. It's not the way it's supposed to be. Yeah. Right. In some ways, it, it destroyed the environment or this this portion of it. So I don't know. Mixed feelings. We do our share of consuming water too, though. Water and electricity. Yep. It's a gorgeous place. Hetch Hetchy Valley is located down a narrow winding road in Yosemite's northwest corner. Because of its remote location, it is much less crowded than its more well-known neighbor, Yosemite Valley, but due to its towering waterfalls, granite cliffs, and dramatic domes, the two have often been compared with one another. Interestingly, there was a long fight over whether or not to build the dam here to create the Hetch Hetchy Reservoir. The fight started in the early days of the National Park with the opposition led by John Muir. Muir argued that a different location outside of the National Park could be found to create the reservoir San Francisco so desperately needed. We can clearly see which side won. In 1913, Congress passed the Raker Act, giving the go-ahead for the dam on the Tuolumne River. The first phase was completed in 1923, and a second phase, completed in 1938, raised the height to 430 feet. Today it holds 117 billion gallons of drinking water and has two hydroelectric power plants downstream, providing both water and power to San Francisco. This is such a cool hike. This is probably one of my favorite hikes we've ever done. Jeff asked why. I don't know why. I just really like it. The waterfalls and the, the reservoir and the, you know, the sheer faces of the rock, I just love it. Well, we finally made it to Apama Falls. And we're at the base of the falls, it seems. It's roaring. It's a nice breeze and a mist coming off. Feels like air conditioning.
we're going to be doing a fair bit of walking today. And we'll be gone a while, so packing a lunch. The road to Mariposa Grove is never open to, to vehicles, but there's usually a shuttle, but there's not right now. So we have to walk all the way up the road, too. All right, so we made it to Mariposa. Yep. And it looks like we've got, what, a two-mile walk up the road. Yep, there's no shuttles running. You're not allowed to drive, so two miles up the road and then the trail. During the main tourist season, there are shuttles that run from the parking lot at the Welcome Plaza to the Grove. But during our visit, the shuttles haven't started running for the season. That means we are hoofing it the two miles up the road. We're hiking up uh, to Mariposa Grove, which is the largest of the Sequoia Groves in Yosemite National Park. It's uh, 48 degrees out and a beautiful day. We are still walking. It's been a slow and steady climb. It's kind of leveled off now though, it's nice. Two miles, wasn't so bad. Mariposa Grove is the largest sequoia grove in Yosemite and is home to over 500 mature giant sequoias. Due to the conditions during our trek, we stick to the Grizzly Giant Loop Trail and don't venture any further into the grove. The main attraction on our hike is, of course, the Grizzly Giant, a fire-scarred behemoth estimated to be around 2,800 years old. If you love seeing these massive beauties, be on the lookout for our future videos. This won't be our last visit to see some really big trees. And subscribe to the channel so you're sure not to miss it. We just finished our hike through Mariposa Grove. Yeah, it was pretty amazing. Uh, it was a little hard to find the trail in a couple of places because it's so snow covered. Some areas you're walking on probably three or four feet of snow. Um, so we kind of cut the trail a little short uh, unintentionally, but that's okay. We still got to see some amazing trees. Uh, what was the big one called? The, the Grizzly Giant. The Grizzly Giant, they say, is between 1800 and 2800 years old. Holy cow, think about that. So, what an amazing hike. Good day. Today is Monday, April 17th, and we are all packed up from Hodge to Meadow and we are headed to the valley. We have reservations at um, North Pines Campground in the valley. You can see all the snow on the side of the road. Um, and just in the three days that we've been in the area, it has melted tremendously. So I can only imagine what it looked like a month ago. We're coming into the valley. You can see falls on the right. I believe that might be El Capitan on the left. I just pulled off for a moment. You can see there's, that's Yosemite Falls, you said, right? I think so, yeah. That looks huge. And now, the incredible Yosemite Valley. We have a difficult time coming up with the words to adequately describe this magnificent place, so maybe we should just let it speak for itself. Take a moment to relax and enjoy the sights and sounds of one of the most beautiful places on Earth.
This is Mirror Lake in the Yosemite Valley. The Mirror Lake Trail is a five mile loop trail rated easy to moderate that follows Tanaya Creek, crosses the creek on footbridges, and then returns to Mirror Lake. For us though, it turns out to not be quite as simple as following a trail and is therefore not exactly the easy walk we are expecting. So we've been walking through a bunch of down trees and over down trees and uh, a lot of big trees twisted up like what you see there. Looking around, it looks like we must be in a recent avalanche zone. Lots of down trees. And you can see snow right, just right over there. Yeah, steep snowy slope here. It looks like there was an avalanche and then the snow has since melted. Oh yeah. You can see the slide here. It's definitely an avalanche. Yep, definitely an avalanche. You see that snow is not smooth, it's all stirred up from where it slid down the mountain. Which way do you think you would go? That way? Or this way? That way, but I mean the trail goes that way. But all right, let's know. go up this way. Everybody we pass keeps trying to steer us off the trail. Yeah, I know. Oh, there's trees down. There's water. There's water. It's hard to do with the backpack on. Yeah. Good job. Ducked under that tree like a pro. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Past most of the mess. Clears up a little bit here. Yep, for a little while. You got it. <laughs> I don't know if I do. Just don't tear your pants. I my pants. Whew. This is like ultimate bushwhacking. Oh, yeah. The trail right there. It's almost back to it. We're trying to get around a big, huge bunch of water. Made it. Yeah. Fighting an old deal. It doesn't look that bad from here, but the other side of it is. It's in like my, a pond. Yeah, it's like it's a pond with no way to walk around it. And so we had to scramble around an avalanche area, a bunch of down trees, and tiptoe through a bunch of water. Bush wag through a bunch of breeze and now we're on this. And now it looks like this. All right, we hiked the whole loop. What was this loop called? I don't know, the mirror, I, just, I don't know. We started at Mirror Lake, we looped around, and here we are back at Mirror Lake again. We still got a good distance to go though, to get back. Yeah, to get back to the camper, we sure do. Yeah, probably got another mile and a half or two miles. Yeah, we walked straight from the camper to here, so. But it's easy walking, so it shouldn't take us long. So at the beginning of this video, we told you about the snow and how close we were to our campground still being closed when we were scheduled to arrive. Well, just a little over a week after we left the park, a good portion of it, including North Pines campground where we stayed in the valley, closed again, this time due to flooding. We barely squeaked through the middle on this one and we feel so fortunate we did. What an amazing visit we have had to one of our nation's most iconic national parks. All right, we made it back to the road. We made it. Now we've got to walk along the road. If you enjoyed our Yosemite adventures, be sure to hit that like button. From the giant sequoias of Yosemite, we travel to California's coastal redwoods next time on Alaskan Ram Travel Adventures.